This is Mark Kramer. I'm the senior lecturer of entrepreneurship at Vin University and the host of Asian Founders and Funders. Today, Zuan Tong, founder of Viet Local, one of the top exporters of coffee to America and other countries, is our guest today. And we always love to feature entrepreneurs of all types of industries, and we're thrilled to have Zion with us today. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Mr. Max. <laughs> I'm very happy to, yeah, to uh, having me on the podcast today. And well, to wonderful. So, with you. Yeah. so let's talk, let's start with, tell us about your background, where you grew up and uh, what you've done professionally. Uh, okay, so uh, I grew up in Mark Lang. It's uh, in the north of uh, Hanoi, 990 km far from Hanoi. And I, I have done uh, like uh, economic, political economic and financial uh, bachelor. And then, uh, yeah, so basically business background. And what did you do professionally before you started your company? Uh, yeah, maybe for that, like uh, I worked for an IT um, startup of uh, like, uh, it, it, it's a funny uh, story. Like I when I got the first job, I tell myself I have to get someone who willing to teach me to do things and to empower me to make decisions. So I, I, I did wait for almost one year to get the first job uh, from an IT startup. So my boss like uh, let me run his business on behalf of him. So like one year working for him, I know how start up, uh, how to run a startup already, like how to lead the team, how to run marketing events, how to manage finance, everything. So after like um, back to 2016, I have experience to run a business already. Yeah. Very so it nice. was waiting one year. Yeah. And what was this? What was it? A software development company, or what was it that you were running? Uh, uh, no, uh, it, it was like on a uh, uh, online teaching platform. Like uh, we build the teaching uh, program for companies. Uh, to teach their staff, for example, like when you have uh, a new product, you want all the staff uh, know about the, the, the new product. So we will uh, put that product, uh, information product online platform and give uh, uh, them the, the, uh, the right to access to log in to learn online. Yeah. Nice. Very, very nice. And were your parents entrepreneurs? Oh, no. My, my parents are farmers. A pharmacist? Yeah, a, a farmer, farmer, a do farmer. farming. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And so, okay. So now you've started uh, Viet Local. So talk about how you came up with this idea and why you started. Um, yeah. Um, and uh, then uh, after 2016, I recognize I have nothing new to learn anymore. And the business uh, got it not so well. So I decided to quit. And then after that, I have one year resting. And then I always question myself, what should I do? I, I don't feel enough because my current job and all other jobs, I don't feel like I, I contribute very real very news to people. You know, like when I apply job for a company, they just tell me what to do. And it's just small piece of the whole business. And I don't have, I don't feel enough. So before with local, uh, I cooperate with a, an Indian guy. He want to invest on a mambo like quarry in Vietnam. So I I tried to connect him with government in Vietnam, uh, with the organization in Vietnam in quarry field. And after one year working for him, and then the project failed because he decided to not to invest in Vietnam anymore. So that is the next uh, lesson I recognize. Oh, wow, cooperate with someone else is not a good idea too. So I decided, oh, I have to do something myself. And in Vietnam, I reckon I have two fields that have new potential to develop. One is agriculture, and the second is tourism. Tourism. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then when I, yeah, and when I, so I, I, I see like I have, uh, I, I have advantage on marketing, on business, on working with the uh, people outside Vietnam. So I dig deep into agriculture and for importing. 
So uh, at that uh, time, I uh, I have to think which products I should uh, start with, and then I recognize like I find out like coffee or tea. We have a really big iPod. Uh, Vietnam is really big importer, but we import with no name. Nobody knows that uh, we have good coffee, good tea. So I think, oh, here, that is how I should fix, uh, where I should uh, fix it. I want to export Vietnamese clear coffee under Vietnam name, and people will know that they drinking coffee from Vietnam. So I, I, yeah, so back to 2019, I go to meet with some coffee farmers to uh, learn about coffee, to listen to their story. And then I recognize that they can do really, really good coffee, but they don't have the market to sell. So just only a small group of people know, know his, his coffee, like his friends, his family know his coffee and nobody else. So I start a writing story about him, I start writing about a coffee model in Vietnam, and uh, uh, introduce uh, to uh, people outside of Vietnam through uh, Facebook, LinkedIn. So time by time, I continuously writing every day. Uh, then after three months, I met two first customers. Wow. And, and who were your first customers? I mean, were they uh, individuals uh, or restaurants or what were they? Um, they um, uh, uh, coffee shop like Rotary, uh, one from Cambodia and other from Mongolia. Wow. Okay. And how yes. many? Yeah. How many? How many countries are you in now? Uh, now I like about like six, seven countries. Congratulations. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> and and how do you get business in other countries? I mean, you don't know those people. How do you get them? Um, like um, they they just texting me. And because they, they know my story, I, I write everything out in my Facebook. So they basically know my model. And uh, we take things to learn more about each other. And then they just decided to uh, order sample to test the quality. And once they're happy with the quality and they purchase, that is uh, one customer from Cambodia. And then uh, other customer from Mongolia. Uh, after uh, two months texting and introducing uh, uh, to him about my model, uh, he uh, decided to visit Vietnam in 2019. And then after he visiting now, we, we have worked together for four or five years already, very good uh, business relationship. And uh, he, his family and his uh, business uh, partner just uh, visited uh, me like last week, like we have uh, had whole week together in Vietnam. They just go back to Mongolia two days ago. So I have a lot of questions in this area now. Yeah. So uh, one question yeah. is, first of all, how did they find you on Facebook? Yes. How did they find you? Uh, like uh, uh, I, I write my story on Facebook every day, my Facebook base. And then I share that story in uh, some coffee groups too. And then I just do that every day. I write, I have something cool to write about our farmer, about why I start my uh, coffee business, uh, about like uh, what uh, what I want to fix, like the agricultural issue in Vietnam. I have a lot of story about that because we are really in the game chain now. We need to reform how we farm. So that all the story and about daily business, I write and I share that as a, the story. So yeah, that is how people read about my story and get to know me and contact me. Yes. Awesome, awesome. So you have formed you. these relationships. Now you've had clients for, what did you say, five years, like the people from Mongolia and Cambodia? Yes. How do yes. you manage, uh, first, how do you manage to keep those relationships going? Like, what do you do to develop such long-lasting uh, uh, relationships? I, I, I think like become very honest and like, I, I don't consider me as a, a, a business woman. I consider me to a, a, a part of uh, my customer team. Like, so, yeah. so anytime they have issue uh, on supply chain, on coffee or everything. So I, I just, I'm here to have like not just 
of a coffee. I, I, I don't consider me a bottle of coffee. I thought of a coffee seller. They just need my coffee. Okay, I have coffee. And then my work is to make sure uh, the quality, consistency, the quantity, all the logistics issue. And anytime they need help, like, oh, they need some information, they need something. I mean, like, that is friendship, relationship, right? Mm -hmm. They need friendship. Like, when you need something from me, uh, from Vietnam side, need some information or need some help, I'm here. So, basically, I feel really, relationship, like, I'm a part of that team. And isn't that the key to being a good, uh, a successful entrepreneur? Yeah. Is that you're yeah. available 24-7 to your clients. And yes, whatever they is. need, they need because like if if you're people who are employees, when the day is done, they just turn everything off. But when you're an exactly. owner, yeah, I mean, yeah. I've done and, 28 startups and I know what that's like. Yeah, right. Yes, right. And actually, uh, to me, busy need uh, equal to like daily issue. Like anytime I uh, I send coffee to them, we have tons of issue, like from paperwork, from invoice, making everything, like even some type of very small issue. But then I think like uh, most uh, big world chasers, they don't have time or, or they maybe they're too busy with as a customer. I don't know. They will not willing to talk to you about it and, and help you to figure it out how to how to do. But then, but to me, not all issue is my issue. So I take it seriously. I fix it even very small issue. And then I know my job. Like I need to make sure the coffee exactly like the symbol I sent to them. It means quality consistency. And then I uh, I have some challenge too to work with local, with, with farmers. And then sometimes they give me something. It's not what uh, my customer want. And then I have to fix it in, in silence. Uh, so, yeah. So, how, do you, yeah. How, do you know, how do you know if the quality is there? Like, or do you do you taste all the coffee yourself and you can tell like somebody does with wine yeah. or whatever? Yeah, I, I have uh, my quality control guide. Like anytime I go into uh, get the coffee and sit to my customer, uh, he had to get to the warehouse and to do final check. Like uh, the first time he had to the first check and send symbol to customer. And the customer uh, uh, signed the contract and, uh, and then uh, close the quantity to me. And then at the time I see that quantity to customer, my uh, quality control guy had to come there and, and do the final check again to make sure the coffee is exactly the one we talk about, the one we agree. So, yeah. So, I just um, sometime, you know, sometime, uh, just last year, like, it eat a lot. It like a uh, one container, like seventeen thousand times. Wow! And then at that time, yeah, at that time, the the coffee price increased crazily. And then, uh, I deposited uh with a cooperative already to order them produce um that amount of coffee for me. But then, uh, when the time I want to get my coffee out. They just sell all, uh, sell all the amounts uh, they produce for me to as uh, with higher price already, and then they try to give me as a type coffee and worse quality, and then when my uh quality control guy figured it out, and then I have a long process working to them, and then go go nowhere. I have to buy. I have to find other and, and buy with much higher price to compensate to my customer with higher quality. And then sometimes, yeah, that it is in need, you know, sometimes issue happen and then I have to make sure uh, I do my job well, like to make sure uh, thing I agree with my customer. I think that is how I'm, I can maintain the relationship with customer for years and how do you make sure that your suppliers don't take advantage of you? And are there any issues being a woman business owner? Because I, I wouldn't think so in um, Vietnam because there's so many women business owners. But do yes. they do, yes. you know, some of the farmers uh, try to take advantage of you? Um, not not really. I, I mean, like... um. Um, how to say it? Like, I, I need to need... Like, I don't think, like, because I'm a woman or a man... Because even women or men, we got the same issue. Uh, because sometimes, you know, you have to choose, like, oh, I will make more money or to be on it with uh, her. So 
some of them choose to be not uh, honest and um, to make more money. So I just need to fix that issue by working uh, with the more carefully. Like uh, for example, like I need to have strict contract, like size the contract carefully with them, uh, talk to them clearly, and then to let them know that they have to be uh, responsible if they not honest to me. So that is how they, they, they feel like, oh, I'm, I'm not easy to be uh, taken advantage of. Uh, so like, you know, sometimes you need to be a little bit tiger in business, tiger voice and <laughs> tiger mental. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Understood. Understood. But by the way, does your background <laughs> as come from a farming family? Does that help you relate to the farmers? Yeah. Like, do you speak the same language? Because I imagine if I went out there, I would not, I wouldn't know how to even interact with them. Yes, uh, uh, that helped me a lot, actually, because I know the farmer issue. Like I told you, uh, why I can make my business work out, because they can produce a good product, but no, but they don't have the good markets. So normally they have to deal with traders, local traders, they just want to get cheaper and cheaper products from them. So. And then when I come, I told them I can add cost the, their product as long as they produce following my standards. And then they recognize they will make uh, a lot of higher, a lot of, a lot more money. And then um, they have better market. They don't have to depend uh, on, um, uh, on local chess anymore. So yeah, they, uh, like they, they, they see the future of farming. I mean, like they can see, oh wow, okay, that is a way uh, they can um, have a better life to cooperate with me. Yes, so that is how I, so basically I fix issue from like a farmer issue and customer issue, so I match them together. So um, why is Vietnamese coffee so sought out? Like why do people like, I mean, there's so many uh, makers of coffee around the world, Colombian coffee, Panamanian coffee, um, Bolivian coffee. There's so many uh, countries that make uh, coffee that people think is good quality, but Vietnamese coffee is very highly prized. Why do people like Vietnamese coffee so much? Yeah, uh, is that an interesting question? <laughs> uh, actually, coffee is very interesting. Like why? Like um, it's the reason. Uh, like uh, uh, it's um places can create um unique sets of flavor and state of coffee. Like due to the difference of a uh, uh, weather or uh, natural condition, can produce a different quality of coffee. That is why like nobody like oh I I don't want to try a new food something like that. So like if you if I have coffee from new reason, so coffee nervous would love to try because it's different from what they have. Yeah. So yeah, this is all that. So mm -hmm. as long as we um, manage the growing and uh, processing um, uh, process good, then to create the uh, good coffee, like high night, the unique taste and flavor uh, in Vietnam. So that is done already. Uh, we will have a big advantage to win the market already because like, hi, I have coffee from Vietnam and then, oh, I, I would love to try because we, I never tried it yet, yeah, something like that. So when you, to get these uh, clients from Cambodia and uh, five, six sorry, other countries. One, one second. So sorry, take one second. Okay, yep. take one second. So when you got your first clients, did they, they contacted you on Facebook and did you send them samples first or did they buy right away? Um, I always for coffee, I have to send samples first. No matter uh, new customer or old customer, like every time before they buy from me, I need to send them samples first and then they know that with a coffee quality, I am going to work with them. So that so is how we so work even, on coffee. So even the client you had for you've had for five years, you yes. send them samples of the batch they're getting before they get it, or are you just saying you send them samples the first time, but after that they just buy from you and trust you? 
the um every time I have to send sample to them. If not uh, because of just because every new crop, the coffee quality may be slightly different. Maybe better than last crops, or maybe a uh, little bit lower. But normally we can improve and make it better and better. So, but every crop basically, um, sometimes you know the weather um, uh, condition different from last year. And sometimes due to, uh, especially like uh, when we try to run coffee and some, some year rain, the rain more than other year. So the quality slightly different. So I always have to uh, resend a customer the symbol every year. Wow. Interesting. I had yeah. no idea you had to do that. And so <laughs> you get you get the coffee grounds and you uh, package them into your own packages and then you send those packages out to your buyers? Yeah, yes, like um, for green beans, uh, basically for now, I, uh, I export mainly green beans, like unroasted beans. So uh, they just require me to uh, uh, backing on the like root bag or some green brew bag, like to make sure the quality uh, of coffee are protected. Uh, and uh, some some of them like may, may need me to bring the name on the back, so I do that for them too. Oh, so you will private label it for them as well. So you put their yeah, names yeah, on the right. boxes. Got yeah. it. And, and that's yeah. interesting. And so when you um, send them this uh, coffee, are, are they also redistributing your coffee? Like, do you have distributors that you sell to and then they sell to restaurants in other countries? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, mainly they just sell domestically. Right. So and you have uh, a network of distributors now who buy from you, then they yes. put their label on it and then, or you put their label on it and then they send it out to the restaurants and so forth. Yes, right. Um, And uh, currently, like uh, I, I just uh, train a little of the model, like uh, I, I sell the roasted coffee beans uh, to the US. Like I cooperate with my business uh, partner named Michael Tilly and I'm working with a, a marketing agency uh, to introduce our roasted bean specialty Arabic car to the US. So I will back, uh, I, I will roast and back the coffee under Viet local name in Vietnam and then I ship by air to the US. So yeah, we just uh, start for two months. So just very new and uh, I, I hope like this year we will uh, get um, that project uh, success, some um, success. So there's so many coffee makers in Vietnam. How do you distinguish yourself from the others? I mean, it reminds me of the uh, wine business. There's so many people selling yeah. wines. I don't know how you yeah. distinguish yourself. Yeah, I understand. Like, for example, like uh, uh, for my uh, my story, like how uh, I get into coffee business because I want um the Vietnamese coffee have name in global markets. And then I share with people how I work with farmer. Uh, I share with uh, people how I, I, I have customer deal with issue, even very small issue. I mean, like, basically, maybe they have the, uh, okay, good quality coffee like me, but they somehow they just want to sell to the, the customer. They just want to make a deal, the sale, and then they don't really pay attention about our customer services about how to uh, help a customer to solve the issue. For example, I really care about how much my customer have to pay for like for coffee or for logistics for all other costs. So I pay. I learn very uh, hard to find the way out to to not to pay. For example, uh, one time the first time I I uh, I brought coffee to Australia, and then my my customer somehow have relationship with uh, uh, a forwarder, like shipping person that I don't know them. And then I have to make very sure that my customer don't have to pay any tax for importing tax in case, um, uh, in case uh, Australia have a good policy to Vietnam, right? And then, uh, and, and then to do that, we have a paper named CO, like the country of origin. And then I ask that uh, shipping agent, hey, do I have to prepare CO for customer to let them avoid tax? They just reply me in very 
not very possible way. They said that it's okay to have it or, or, or not. I mean, like they said, like, sorry, uh, they said, like, not very possible, right? like, okay, you can have it or uh, okay to not have it. I said, no, no, it's not the way to work. You have to check with the, the partner in Australia to make sure that we don't have to pay any tax with CO or without CO. So they had no idea what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It's their job. It is a professor, professional, but they don't have any idea. And then I have to, I have to go to the custom side of Australia to find figure it out, like the rate to import coffee from Vietnam to Australia. And then we were very lucky, like zero percent, like no test. Even I don't have to be to 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 provide the CO because the process to make uh, that paper is very difficult. And it costs money too. So when I recognize with my customer that, oh, we don't have to pay any tax, importing tax, so we don't have to uh, do any CO, so you don't have to pay any cost for CO. That is how it works. So every detail, I pay very high attention in detail to make sure my customer don't have to pay, don't have to waste any amount of money. So yeah, I think I think that is how how customer like working to with me. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot of work. It's involved to make this yeah. business work, and, and yeah, and right, make, like and satisfy your customer. Uh, you know, I wonder um, with the coffee business, um, can you expand beyond? Uh, I, I imagine all your clients are in Asia. Is that where all your clients are right now? Um, like no, no. Uh, I have a customer in uh the US too, the US, uh, Mongolia, um, Australia, uh, Sri Lanka, Cambodia. Yeah, that is uh yeah so far. And then now I'm recently cooperate with a uh, a dance need a partner uh to uh, introduce my coffee to to Denmark. And uh, so when you are trying to expand your business, do you target certain distributors or how do you expand your business? Do you find, do you reach out to people to buy uh, your product and distribute it to restaurants or do they, or, or, or all your com customers come to you? How does it work? I'm um, like, um, actually like all customer come to me and then um, on um, most Asian customer come to me uh, from Facebook. Uh, and then, yeah, like I, I have one funny story, like how I get a customer from Sri Lanka. Uh -huh. uh, he run a very, very nice uh, hotel and restaurant and coffee shop. And then he uh, hit, hit a business name, hit restaurant, a hotel name, home away from home. Oh. And then I, yeah, and then I, I just think, oh wow, you you really have a good name. I the, the name it really impressed me. And uh -huh. then that is how I talked to him, yes. And then uh and then he recognized I work on coffee and he told me that he has a coffee shop too. And then I said, Oh wow, interesting. Let me send you some Vietnamese coffee symbol to see it's for you to compare to see if it's good quality or not, or like uh, if you like it or not. I, I just uh, want to send symbols for him to test himself, like no business purpose, because I, I never think I, I can do business with a, a, a person from Sri Lanka. <coughs> and then after he tested his symbol, he goes, wow, it's a great tea coffee I have a taste. <laughs> and then from since that time, you know, he become a customer now and for four or five years already too. And wow. then he's going to visit me yeah, in, in the end of February. So we will have the coffee trip uh, together. I will show him um, our coffee farm and our farmer, yeah. So um, how, how do you market yourself besides Facebook? Is there other ways that people uh, find LinkedIn. out about you? Um, and in LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and LinkedIn is a different story because like I connect with uh many with people from the US. But for now, I, I focus on people in the US and then I connect with people 
and then I have some great connections there. So every week I send my uh, story to. And then I, I get some, uh, you know, some huge potential customer interested in our model, like a, a big, big coffee chain. Like he, he always makes schedule. Like, oh, I want to, uh, want to visit Vietnam, want to visit uh, the model and farmers. Big, 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 big coffee. Do you, have, do you know them? Yeah. No. The really, no? Oh, big, big, uh, yes. Me, I know them. Big, yes. Big, 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 yeah. Big, big, big yeah. coffee, right? Let, let me uh, find the right name. Just hold on one second, please. Uh, big, yeah, big coffee. Yeah, big B coffee. Yes. So they really, they really have a good model because they want to uh, to work directly with farmer only. They they are changing now. Yeah, so they want to change one hundred percent of them. Uh, the stock coffee stocks uh, come from directly from farmer, uh, and I, then I, they want to change the yeah. So, do you manage that process for them with the farmer? Oh uh, yes. Uh, so, like, uh, uh, so, uh, he he like um he plan to visit and then to learn how I work with farmer and how I help the farmer to train uh, the, the way they farm to change their life. Because agriculture in Vietnam, we have the last story about issue. I can give you two big issues in Vietnam for now. Uh, for example, uh, one reason in Lâm Đồng, we call Đà Lạt or Lâm Đồng, like the tourism city. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then people don't make a lot of money from coffee, but they can make a lot of money by selling their farm to real estate. Yeah, and then that investor they cut our land into smaller land to resell. Right. I mean, like no real, no real products in that land. They just destroy our land. But then farmers see they can make a lot of money that they may have never can imagine. Right. So so. Yeah. So from now, me and and some people, some partner and people in, in in that area, we need to work fast together to to farming to group the farm and farming together to protect our uh our coffee agriculture there. Otherwise, if we don't work fast enough, just in few years, farmer may just destroy all the lands, resell the land, and done. Because like uh, so all people doing farming in Vietnam so far, young people, they they not interested in agriculture yet because they cannot make a lot of money. So they just go to the big city to work. So the, we have to like attract young people to go back to do the farm and to make sure farmer to make good money from the farm. So to, to keep the farm. Yeah, otherwise everything will gone in few years. So are, are, is Vietnam afraid of losing farmers uh, because of all the building that's coming up? You know, that real estate developers, is this a real problem in yes. Vietnam? Yes, yes. Like they, they don't really place any real value on that land. They just cut the land into smaller pieces and then wait for the price to go higher and then other investors will come to buy. Yeah, do you know that model in Vietnam in real estate? Like yes. they just leave the land empty and wait yeah. for the price to go up and, and buy and resell and buy and nothing there. Yeah, I see that with real uh, uh, houses here in Ocean Park that are empty, yes. but I heard that they're all bought uh, already and they just sit empty as the investors are waiting for buyers to come in and pay a higher price yeah. uh, for it. So it's just a, a real exactly. estate... Uh, happen, an investment that they never use. Right, happened everywhere, and now they come to um the farm in uh, London now, and then and as a ECE, uh, coffee farmer from smaller community, like they live uh, uh far from the main street, like they they live in mountainous place, they are in poverty, mm. like they don't make that money, and then they really struggle with poverty. Like and 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 uh, even the coffee price 
increased like crazy recently, but they still don't make a lot of money because local traders told them that we cannot sell coffee. Uh, so uh, we, we only can buy the coffee cheap. You mean like the whole local trader control the market there and then farmer almost make nothing because they just want to get cheap coffee from farmers there to to make money. So that is a two issue in, in coffee. Now I, I want to solve uh, like the, uh, the first one work with uh, my partner, farmer in London to scale up the coffee farm faster and faster to protect the farms. And then other is I want to go dig deep into uh, to work with farmers in uh, in a small community in mountain place uh, to uh, make them produce coffee for me good quality uh, to export so they can make better uh, money than just working with local traders. Well, why are there so many coffee shops in Vietnam? I mean, there's I mean Americans are big buyers of coffee too and and drinkers of it. But almost every couple feet that you walk, um, <laughs> that you there's somebody yeah. selling coffee. I mean, it's just amazing. Like in Ocean Park, there must be 25, 30 coffee uh, sellers. Yeah. And sometimes there's like three or four in one building. Not one, but three or four people selling coffee. Why do so many people uh, um, want to be I in think, that business? Uh, I think like... Um... Uh, Vietnamese drink a lot of coffee. Like, uh, uh, like uh, Vietnamese uh, go to a coffee shop. Sometimes they go there for work. Sometimes they go where they just grab a cup of coffee. I mean, like, that is a part of our culture. Like, you can see coffee shop everywhere. And then they still do good business. Because, like, I think most of us drink coffee. So but every day. Even and, though uh, people and, drink a lot of coffee, when I'm walking by these coffee shops, uh, aside from like a handful, most of them are empty. Some of them are beautiful coffee shops and nobody's in there. I, there's a coffee shop <laughs> in my building that I think I've lived here eight months. I think I've seen a total of 10 people in this coffee shop. Oh, so not and a I, good visit for them, huh? Yeah, and I wonder how do they survive with so little business? Um, because... I think like, yeah, I understand you. Yeah, like uh, um, the the fee to set up a coffee shop in Vietnam is low, especially if if uh in your own house. I think that like, most people there like don't rent, don't have to rent. They uh -huh. just have their yeah, they just have the house there, and then they just set up the coffee shop. So basically, they do nothing. They just make they just uh, spend a little to spend some, and then to set up the co uh, co coffee shop there. Sometimes they make money, sometimes not, but in basic, they, they just don't lose anything because that is their house. But in case you have to rent the space to run coffee shop, it's a different story. You have to worry about how the business grows. But actually, many Vietnamese people offer, open the coffee shop just because they like it. They like, they, they, they like to have a, a shop like that and then they have the house, so they just set it up. Very nice. So the employees that you have, uh, how many employees do you currently have? And how do you pick the people that you think are right for this very high um, service business? Um, actually, I I don't really have full-time employee. Yes. I, I just have like, for example, like uh, how to say like, I can feel myself if uh, they are, they have the same working ethic like me. Like, for example, like quality control guy. I work with him from very beginning. He's very nice. And then he's like me. Like, any issue coming, he deal with it himself and very very possible. Like, um, you know, when uh, I talk uh, to someone, I can feel their working ethic. I mean, how they deal with things around, you know, with uh, around. So it's very important to me to work with a partner so they have to be one honest and two very responsible on uh, their job. Like they have to be active, have to deal with issues him themselves, right? Don't have to ask me how to do or what to do. They have to figure it out with issue and they have to be they have to find a way to deal with it no matter what. So that is how I, I mix the partner to work with. 
So they're no. all entrepreneurial themselves. Yes, exactly. I, I, I don't, uh, I really don't like the idea of employee. I don't like to hire someone to work for me in terms of, hey, do what, do this, do that. I, that is really not. So for example, like my quality control guy, I motivate him to have his own business, like to have his own roastery, to produce coffee himself. I told him like, uh, actually, and uh, he has a, a robot star farm too. And he really focused on farming recently. And he, yes. And then by me, he was motivated to like, uh, to dig deep into agriculture. Uh, like, so uh, we, we plan ahead together what is the coming project and what he needs to learn. For example, uh, his English it, uh, doesn't look good enough. Yes, I told him, you have to learn English to work with me. Because sometimes uh, we have a customer from outside Vietnam. They want to come here to test our coffee. I want you to communicate with them uh, to let them know how we control uh, our quality. Some, something like that. So he had to learn himself. And the other, like, um, he not uh, really good, like, um, he, uh, he not really good at testing, cutting, I mean, the specialty level. He not really expert yet. I mean, like, now we have some top experts in Vietnam, and he's not the top yet. I told him, you should uh, take some lesson to improve your skill. I pay for you. You need right. to learn. Yeah, something like that, or like in, in agriculture, the same. You need to learn more about farming and agriculture. And recently, he just like have an online uh, courses uh, for in high-tech agriculture because he really wants to focus on that. So I I don't think I will have full-time employees. I don't need them because I, I prefer to outsource a team outside to work some parts of job for me. And then make sure that it re their responsibility, not like to come back to me and tell me like, oh, what what I need to do, and we have issue, and I don't know what to do. It it's horrible to me. So, so all you, my visit, uh, my visit, yeah. So you use uh, all contractors. They have to be self motivated. They have to be hard working yeah. like you, and that's your criteria yeah. for uh, yeah, doing right. it. And if they do that, then you're going to send them business. Yes, right, exactly. Uh, and even I have my also uh, thing like uh, tax and finance too, financial too. Like sometimes they ask me what, uh, they tell me what to do. I don't have to tell them what to do. And then sometimes they train me, you know, it's fun. Like they train me, hey, Miss Vian, do that. We have to submit uh, some tax and paper and some financial statement. And then, okay, okay, wait, please. Just wait. And I mean, like, they have to be on themselves, be responsible on what they do. And then I do the same with the logistics. Like when I work with them, I work with my partner for years already since I started using it. My job is to send coffee from my warehouse to the bot. And then other job is their job. And then they need to tell me what to do. They need to tell me which paper I need to provide to them. They need to tell me like, because I, I do all process myself every uh, all the time already. I know the process, so I teach them how to do first. Like like for example, like uh, checking the tax, right? Checking to see if my customer have to pay tax or not. I told them how to do, and then so they they get used to with my working style now. So from now on, I just need to send my coffee to the bot, and then they have to tell me what to do. Like, like which papers they need, which papers they need me to sign, and they have to handle everything. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so, <laughs> it's a very nice model. Yeah, I think very, very nice model uh, yeah, because it, there's uh, a very low risk, and yeah. you have a higher margin. And if business is slow, you don't have to worry about laying people off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, right. So that's that's all great. And yeah. so um, do you use video at all for marketing? Like, do you do YouTube or anything like uh, that? Do you uh, do TikTok? No, not yet. No, I'm, I'm not good at video on, uh, or TikTok. Like, I, I'm feel, uh shy or embarrassed to um, uh, to show my face on business uh, to face yeah so even now uh, people rarely see my face on my post or picture so uh, I it's not my uh, my advantage 
so but uh, the the coming partner Danish partner uh, we're going to sell to Denmark now and he will do that he will have some YouTube video some TikTok and he will do it himself and yeah I'm very happy he can do that wonderful now did you finance this company yourself or did you raise outside money how did you how did you fund your company uh, yeah, it another interesting story. Like, I don't have to raise money from anywhere because I just was the first step. I need to make sure I have good quality, uh, good coffee first, and then when customer come to me, uh, they have to pay me upfront. Like, uh, they have to uh, deposit some uh, money first, and then uh, we have uh, money like the farmer can produce themselves. And don't really, they have enough fun and enough resources to produce that amount of coffee already. And then once the coffee ready, my customer had to pay the upfront to get the coffee out. So basically like all the upfront money, I, I don't have to pay, really had to pay myself first. Yeah. Oh, so that's so, the best way of financing a company, right? It, it's exactly, exactly. Like, uh, because uh, we have to say like, I think like, um, so the most difficult thing to do that is uh, you have to build trust with customer. You, you, you need to show customer. I don't know how I, I can do that. I mean, like, uh, I just tell them everything I have. Uh, I just tell them my model, how I work, the, the process. Uh, I, I do the coffee and the process to control the quality for them, something like that. But then somehow they trust and then they send money um, to me. I have many customers I have. I, I never meet in person yet. I just do business online. And then they send money to me and then uh, wait for like two weeks or like one or, or the time to send coffee to them. Is that all? I mean, like all money come to my bank account first and oh. then it's the awesome. Yeah. So <laughs> there's a lot of people who have to trust you at, in yeah. order to do business. I mean, there's a lot of different people all depending on you. To uh, be trustworthy. Um, so my, uh, my I understand the question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I uh like the customer big me and I big customer too. I I really not really, but I cannot work with people who just care about the price. I mean, like if people cares about my story, if they know get to know me through my story, and then they know my model already, and then they. Somehow we can make the business, business go very smooth, but some people just uh, come uh, reach out to me to ask for the price, to ask for the price, and then they just consider, oh, I want, uh, I want good quality, but I want cheap, something like that. I know that it's not my customer because I have no way to work with them. It's not my advantage. My advantage is not produce them the cheap coffee. So. Very like especially people from Iran, you know Iran. Yeah. yeah. Iran import a lot of coffee, but sometimes they they, they so many of them are interested with me, and then I know that I have no way to work with them because they just care about the price, and then so so on, so on. So I fail from the pricing already, and then I have never have to deal to the spot. That, oh, I need upfront, and even if I pass the pricing. And then I convince them to pay upfront by showing them my working process. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. For example, yeah, um, like because they don't want to pay upfront just because they worry I'm a cheater, right? A scammer. Yeah. So I just need to show them my working process. The first, I can send them. I can uh, work with the third party like Qui IMA, for example, to come to our factory to investigate if we are real or not. And then they will get some sample, coffee sample from us and to, to do quality testing to make sure that coffee will match their requirements. So basically, we, I work with third party to prove them we are here, real business. So, if, if they still say no, so I have to question like why they don't pay me upfront. They go into scam, something like that. Yeah. I agree with you uh, totally. Even yeah. the consulting work I do, I always get half upfront, quarter and a quarter. 
Um, yeah. Otherwise, uh, you, they could just say, oh, I don't like whatever you gave them and decide not to pay you. And then what are you going to do? Yeah, so uh, really so have to question. Yeah, yeah that, that doesn't work. What, what do you like most about being an entrepreneur and what do you like least? Uh, wow, I like the most thing. I can live with many amazing people, you know, like like people with different idea, with uh, different work background, and then we we talk together. Like we get to know each other. It, it always can wow me. I'm very happy to connect with uh, like like my uh, people. They have great idea, and they working on great ideas. It, wow! It make my life it, it like so rich. I mean, like oh, it make me happy that to connect with people. And um, that is the the most interesting part in business. And um, uh, don't like the needs. Uh, I think maybe like I have to travel a lot. That is the one I don't like the most. I don't like uh, yeah because like uh, business. Sometimes I have to to travel a lot. So sometimes I feel tired. I don't want to go, but I have to go. But un it's still fun. Yeah. Understood. How big do you yeah. think you can grow this business? Um, I I never think about it yet. I just do it step by step. I have the long project. I mean, like I have a long visit, and uh -huh. then I should get there step by step. Yeah. I don't push myself to uh, to have to be like on revenue or like how how many times I have to I pass eight years. I don't do that. I just care about. With cool people, I connect with this year. For example, I just met with you, right? I, I'm very happy. And then uh, I, I just met with uh, then Dennis uh, partner, I, I will introduce yeah, by another Dennis business. And then I feel like, oh, very happy already. And then, oh, we can do some business together with the Dennis, for example. So that is how I plan my business recently. Like I met with uh, some people, and then they interested in working on coffee with me. And then that is how I pick a pen business. So I don't really care about like, oh, I have to get uh, how many men, uh, how many more new customer or how many more money. No, I, I don't have that in mind. I just like um, every day I just uh, care about what going on in the coffee industry, uh, what people care about in related to the coffee. Now I repost and I comment, I build connection with people. And then sometimes we figure it out, oh, we can do something together. It's really cool. Yeah, that is how I do this in it. Wow, uh, that's excellent. Yeah. And so do you worry about competition at all? I mean, what, how do you look at competition? Uh, a good co corporation. Uh, competition. How do you look at competition? Uh, competition, like compete, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, do you worry about the competition it, or not worry about it no, at all? No, it's not. Like, I, I have no word in I, I mean, like, in my business dictionary, I don't have the word compete or competition. I mean, I, I just know myself, I know what I have, and then I just try to help my people from what I have, and then I keep learning, and I keep uh, uh, growing my business network, and then connect with people to see if uh, we can work together or not. Like, you know, you never really know what the competitors have, right? Make no, to me, make no sense to learn about them, because we never know them. So I just focus on what I have, what I can do, uh, what I can improve. That is how I do business. Yeah. So my last question to you is, yeah. what's your one piece of advice for entrepreneurs? What, what again, please? What, what is your one piece of advice to somebody who, has, who wants to be an entrepreneur? Ah. What's your one piece of advice? Oh, <laughs> that is an interesting question. <laughs> okay, so um, I think like, uh, say um, I think like uh, to um, start a business I to me personally I start from which issue I want to deal with or which issue I I want to help people to deal with and then from that uh, perspective I will find a way and build a model to uh, to help people to deal with that issue so as long as you it, it very clear on issue you want to work on and then after that you 
uh, learn learn like by learning upgrade yourself step by step so to build the model to cope with that issue that is how business work so i i don't start a uh, business from money or i don't start a uh, business from from uh, for fun or something like that so i don't know others because uh, different people have different motivation to start business like i know one friend he he really like in interested in like making money money is his motivation so he can do any job to make money as long as it's legal right. he can do <laughs> really hard work yeah right some people have that the money motivation so with different motivation you will have different way to um to 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 um, start uh, something on so if someone have similar mindset like me like they really really want to have someone or have uh, to deal with uh, an issue so just very clear on which issues they want to focus on and then learning keep learning about that to to, to find a way to to make it work so that is how I do it. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, you have a fantastic story and you have been an amazing interview. And I look forward to maybe having you again a year from now to see how you progress. Uh, so I thank, thank you so, so much. much. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Oh, I'm very happy to, to, to have me on the podcast today to share my story. I'm very happy.